This video is installation support to be used in conjunction with instructions found in our kits. We hope that it will help guide you through your installation. If after viewing this video you find that you are not confident in your mechanical abilities or do not have the necessary tools, please seek a professional installer. Begin by checking the part number on the label to be certain that it is the correct kit for your application. Your kit will include sealed parts bags, hardware, linkage, gaskets, manifold, air cleaner, and of course, the carburetor. Lay everything out on a clean work surface, separate and count all the hardware pieces, and study the photos and the instructions so that you are confident that everything is there and within easy reach. Our instructions are based on an engine in stock condition. If you've made other modifications, some steps may not apply, while other steps may need to be added. Just a reminder, before you begin your installation, be certain to disconnect your battery. We'll need a good service manual for instruction on removing all stock components, as well as torque specs for installing your new kit. Use your service manual when removing your stock intake manifold and end castings. If you are reusing your end castings, be sure to remove and thoroughly clean them. Clean the intake manifold surface on your cylinder heads, making certain to remove any old gasket material. And be prepared to install with new gaskets. Our installation includes new MP dual port end castings. MP single port end castings are also available. Locate the case stud just behind the fuel pump to determine if it is a long stud or if you will require the long bolts supplied in the kit. We lucked out, our stud is long enough. Slide the manifold from the driver's side under the alternator or generator and locate the manifold on the stud or install the long bolt to hold it in place. Snug, but do not tighten. Mount your end castings using new gaskets and couplers. Install the coupler clamps loosely as the coupler will need to be flexible. Mount them so that the clamp screws face the rear of the engine. I have found that inverting them to engage the coupler, then turning them down to the cylinder head works best for me. Do not tighten the end casting nuts yet. Yes, it is much easier on an engine stand. Your installation will most likely be with the engine in your car it will be somewhat more difficult. Take your time. If your engine has been modified, you may find that the manifold tubes are too long to properly fit with your end castings. These tubes can be cut to fit. Just be sure to measure twice and cut once. Install the carburetor studs Thread them in just enough to feel them begin to protrude out the bottom of the flange. Install the carburetor to manifold gaskets. Then install the carburetor using the nuts and spring washers provided. Remove the locking washer on the carburetor throttle shaft. Carefully pry, then bend straight with a thin screwdriver, then remove the throttle shaft nut. Do not remove the linkage arm from the carburetor. Install the new linkage arm provided. It should be facing toward the rear of the engine, about the 4 o'clock position. Reinstall the locking washer and nut, snug but do not over tighten the nut, then bend the locking tab back to prevent the nut from rotating.
Install the round collar with set screws onto the linkage shaft. Install the linkage shaft with collar through the two linkage mounts on the manifold. Then install the throttle arm onto the shaft with the throttle holder to the right and loosely tighten the Allen screws. Please note that on a previous version of this kit, you were instructed to place the collar between the two manifold linkage mounts. You will need to install the collar as described here for the linkage rod to properly install on the manifold. Adjust the linkage rod so that the arm on the left is in line with the new linkage arm you installed on the carburetor. Then loosely tighten the collar against the linkage mount. Then push the throttle arm toward the right linkage mount and loosely tighten. You will see that the collar and throttle arm sandwich the linkage mounts on the manifold. You want it to move freely, but eliminate most side-to-side -side play. Now install the swivel joints and the stud to complete the linkage. Only one lock nut is required to maintain the set length. With the linkage shaft arm at the 7 o'clock position, install the swivel ends to the linkage shaft arm and the carburetor linkage arm. Adjust the length as necessary for proper fitment of the swivel arm studs. Tighten the nut, then adjust the throttle arm to engage your throttle cable. Once you confirm that your throttle cable is properly attached and that you have full closed and full open throttle, go back and tighten all the linkage components and carburetor mounting nuts to spec. Install the air cleaner gasket, base, and velocity stacks using the nuts and spring washers provided. Then torque to spec. The fuel inlet can be moved left or right to accommodate your application. Just swap the fitting and plug. Install the air cleaner element in top with the washer and wing nut provided. Align the manifold and carburetor to make certain that the carburetor is as level as possible. It should be in line with the fan housing. Rotate the manifold to a straight position, then tighten the manifold coupler clamps. For a single carburetor to function properly, the manifold requires heat. The heat from the exhaust is passed through the preheater tubes into the manifold casting. The manifold is designed to route the heat toward the base of the carburetor to prevent icing. If you are using an aftermarket header, it may be necessary to drill the preheater passage before installing the preheater tubes. Fit the tube into the opening at the bottom of the manifold and push it until the flange aligns with the preheater flange on your header. Install the gasket and hardware, but do not tighten. Install the other side, then tighten the end casting nuts and preheater tube hardware to spec. Now review that all components are tightened to spec, then install your fuel line. Review our best lean idle instructions, reconnect your battery, and fire it up. Immediately check for any fuel leaks and fix as necessary. We always recommend that you begin with a new set of spark plugs, points, condenser, and ignition wires, and that your valves have been checked and adjusted to spec. 
review our initial setup and adjustment video, and tune the carburetor to your application.